Just how unprecedented is this MP takeover of the agenda today? Well, it's not unusual for the opposition to take control of the agenda of the House on specified days. What I think is significant is that this happened against the will of the government. Um, and what that means is that the government has essentially lost the trust of the House. And uh, the fact that Parliament felt the need to take control in this way um, just underlines that fact. And do we think that this is, is, is this definitely going to happen, this indicative votes process? Because before they actually get into the voting, they have to decide on the process. That's going to happen between two and three o'clock, we understand, thereabouts. And there could be attempts by those who don't like what is going to happen here, be they in the government or elsewhere, could be attempts to wreck this in some way. It's possible. I mean, the business motion itself has to pass. And it might be that suddenly people have decided actually they don't want it. This is Oliver Lewin's yeah. business of the House motion, which essentially gives the sets green light the to process. this process. Yeah, it sets out what the process will be. There could be alternatives at table. There could be amendments that, that would be tabled. Um, it's hard, it, this is possible. Chances are that Oliver Lewin will have canvassed as hard as he can to try to ensure and try to counteract any of those mm. amendments, but it is a possibility. How much does this tell us about the future path for Brexit? Because Oliver Lewin, the Tory grandee, senior figure in the Conservative Party, who's crafted this process, he says that the government should listen to it and it should dictate the way forward. But the government, the executive, has been hesitant to say that they will take orders from the House. Well, I think... One, one thing to underline is these votes are not binding on the government. Um, another point I think that is very much worth underlining is that no matter what the future relationship voted for is, the government's deal still has to pass, because most of the government's deal is actually about the withdrawal agreement, about the terms of exit, and nothing about that changes, mm. depending on what, you know, if you have a majority for a free trade agreement, for instance, a backstop still has to be voted for. Yeah, help me understand this as well, because a lot of what they're voting on uh, here looks like a total smorgasbord, a mixed bag right. of, of options. And some of those relate to the withdrawal agreement, but most of them relate to the future relationship. Right. And actually, the future relationship is not legally bound at all. It's only the withdrawal agreement that is, and some of them, like the Labour Party motion on the customs union, even re relies, as you say, on May's withdrawal agreement being passed. So in a sense, you wonder what all the fuss has been about with regards to the withdrawal agreement and passing it. So I think uh, one point of view, and I'm, I'm sure that would be the government's point of view, that uh, this is you know, largely irrelevant. It's mostly about the political declaration that was non-binding. You could, and there were suggestions that you would separate the political declaration yes. from the withdrawal agreement. However, um, the, where you're going obviously determines or changes the terms of the, of the withdrawal agreement because the future relationship will determine how necessary, in part, the backstop is because that will be, it says in the withdrawal agreement, that will be succeeded in whole or in part. And there are a number of different ways you could try to do that. Um, and so the future relationship does reflect on the withdrawal agreement and particularly on... Um, the longevity of the backstop. Mm. And that is why um, you heard uh, Keir Starmer occasionally call it um, a blind Brexit. They want to vote for a withdrawal agreement but not know where the destination is. Because he 